Hello. Hey, folks. Uh, welcome to VRIT. Um, so this today we will cover um, some of the basic and advanced usage of Microsoft Outlook. And uh, I have uh, consultants and trainees asking for and a lot of people, um, you know, take their job. You know, that could be their first job, or maybe the first job where they have to use Microsoft Outlook um, very heavily. So Microsoft Outlook is, a, you all know, it's an email client, and then in you know, lots of companies, almost all the companies use us, you know, Microsoft Outlook, and it's very essential. And if you have not worked in a company, if you don't have any corporate experience, and if you have just used a Gmail or any webmail for that say, it is very challenging for you to be able to use Microsoft Outlook. I have seen lots of people, um, they can never used any sort of email clients. They have only used Gmails and, you know, I mean, uh, sorry, any web like uh, Yahoo and Outlook, sorry, uh, Hotmail and web browser. The email client, um, you have to install it. Uh, if you go to a company, <clears throat> I mean, this is this training I'm going to cover just in preparation, um, just to prepare some of you folks when you you know go and work in a company, be it an SAP job, any job, right? So you should be knowing how to use Outlook. Uh, like I said, uh, I have seen lots of people have no clue about the Microsoft Outlook itself. Uh, it is a basic essential tool. Uh, in a company, in a corporation, in you know that that carries your work, right? So how do you communicate to others? So I don't I don't have to give you what is Outlook. I don't have to give you an example or you know definition on Outlook. You probably know. You should know. But uh, when it, when you start your first job, <clears throat> then you have to use Microsoft Outlook. And how do you do this? And how do you get used to this, right? And what are the do's and don'ts? How do you make? How do I? How do? How? What would help you to make it? You're very comfortable. What would help you to look like you are an experienced professional, right? You are very versed with uh, handling or using Microsoft Outlook. So this is the first part of my training on Microsoft technologies, I mean, the applications. So I start with Outlook, probably I'll cover Excel, you know, Word or anything, um, some of the advanced functions. Okay, yes, let's go there. Again, welcome to uh, VRIT, we are SAP consulting and training company. And today you are today you are here. Uh, today is 25th of February. Uh, it's uh, Thursday evening in um, Texas, in Dallas. So well, let's just go into the training. All right. So, like I said, Microsoft Outlook is a key skill. Having said that, so what is the usage? It's used for email. So let's go. How do we use the email and replies and signature? Okay, I'm going to share my screen. This is my personal laptop, personal email. Um, there are some confidential information I respect. Um, you know, you don't do you take my email or do something else. Okay, this is just exclusively for training, and hopefully you will get a very good insight about you know why you are here and what you want to get. All right. So when you join a company, obviously you will have the laptop comes with the Outlook. Everything is set up. Microsoft applications, whatever SAP GUI, SAP you know web portal or how will you access it? It comes with everything. Accesses may not be. So you have to talk to the service test and get the access, the manager has to approve, you know, all those things. But however, your email is already set up. It comes with the laptop, comes with the email set up. You'll have a password to log into your laptop. Okay. And then once you log in, boom, you have access to Microsoft Outlook. So Outlook looks like that. If you have to add, it generally you don't have to add. You have to add a new account. You go here and add account. So let's say you have a, you have an email address. Let's say for personally you have some email address that has a domain, not not the free email addresses, right? If you have a domain, then you can go and add. And uh, I'm not going to cover that. You know, there is a lot of settings that you have to do. Uh, that's not part of this. But you work in a company, you have a laptop. You just received a laptop today, and it's already set up. Okay. And uh, obviously, you open up and you know how to compose a new email. <laughs> So the new email opens up, so it does nothing. It's just going to show automatically from, okay? Then to address CC, BCC. What is BCC? <laughs> Blind carbon copy. <clears throat> when you send an email to the right, the person you're addressing to, you put the email address here. CC is somebody who has to be informed, okay? CC is somebody who has to be informed, <laughs> carbon copy. 
Two is somebody you are directly addressing that email address. Make sense? CC is somebody you are direct, you want the person to be informed. It could be a manager. It could be the person you are sending to his manager, her manager. Now, blind carbon copy is somebody, you don't want anyone to know whom you're sending. Let's say you want to send it to yourself or you wanted to send it to somebody that others do not want to see, other one, others do not want to know, then um, you have to use a blind carbon copy so that nobody will know. Subject, that's very important. You're going to put the subject. Subject should be very close to what <clears throat> your the email is all about. I have seen people sending an email with the old subject. They never change the subject. If you keep sending email, you know the email will get convoluted. Could you know get into different directions when when you when you keep sending emails, responses, replies, and upward. That is not you know that is you know this even if you use Gmail, right? When you keep sending emails, the conversation becomes something else that has no connection to the original subject that it has started with. Try to change the subject. Try to keep up with the subject, uh, your conversation, or try to keep the subject with your conversation, or try to keep up the conversation with the subject. That's very, very important. Why? When I receive an email, I will see first thing is who it came from. What is the subject? Okay. And is it directly addressed to me? These are the three things a person would see. If you want to catch somebody's attention, you have to make sure you are addressing the right person. But generally, the thumb rule is you do not address to everybody. You do not put a lot of people here. Okay. Specifically, who has to take an action? Maybe one or two people. CC is for people. CC is place where we want somebody to be informed. Okay. And BCC is somebody you don't want to, anyone to know that you are sending to this person. <clears throat> okay. So it's very important. So keep it very simple. Sub. Send directly addressing to who? Okay, this is important. And then subject as much close as possible to the conversation. Great. Then you click send. Now you don't have a signature. How do you add signature? So this is how you add a signature. You open it. The signature. How do you put the signature? Right here. You go here, add the signatures. Okay. You can add the signatures here. Click in new, okay? You click new here, you, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna teach you. Signature is very important. You'll play around with this. You create a signature and then map that, map that signature to one account. And then are you gonna use this for new messages or replies? You can have two signatures, one for reply, one for new. Generally, when you're responding to, when you're, when you're creating new email, you wanna put all your details, who you are, what's your position, what's your phone number, everything. But when you reply, when you give a response, you don't have to. You can keep it simple because they are communicating to you. They already know who you are. So that is why Outlook has given two options. One is new, one is for reply, okay? This is where you keep your, so this is where you create a, your signatures and you can get signature templates, okay? Now, when you set up, it is automatically going to create a signature. For example, I'm gonna put, uh, let's say my name here, okay? So it will come automatically here. Uh, but because I just change, it doesn't show. So you don't have to type your signature. It is going to come automatically, okay? Next, reply. We talked about composing an email, a reply, a signature. Now, setting up meetings, integration with Zoom or WebEx. This is another thing. I have seen people struggling how to set up a meeting. You have, somebody is asking you, hey, can you set up a meeting? How do you set up a meeting, All right? So I'm going to close this. Okay, here, if you go to new items, there's a meeting button here. Okay, you go and open this. Okay, it is going to look like this. The meeting button will, when you open, it says untitled, right? This is how it looks like this. Now you can put, obviously, make sure you put a title, precise and succinct, what you wanted to communicate, what is the title, what is the meeting is all about, put that. For example, um, testing kickoff. Maybe put a project number, put a date when you want to do it, or you know, uh, is it is it a, is it FUT or uh, VST regression testing? All the details. Now here's the thing: required. Who is required for this meeting? Who is optional? You can include a manager, so I include somebody away from your team. He can join if she or he can. Otherwise, um, it, it's an optional for that person. But required is somebody who you really want that person to be in the meeting. You put the required. 
Now here's the start date and end date in all this stuff. Good stuff, you know already. And then um, this time zones comes automatically based on your settings. You can change that as well. This is important, reminders. It always default by 15 minutes. So it will pop up. Okay, you have a meeting in 15 minutes, okay? Now, if you do that, <clears throat> then it will, your, your outlook will pop up. Hey, you have a meeting coming up in 15 minutes. So you can join directly. So you know it's a reminder, okay? Um, the another thing here is, um, so yes, uh, location. Today, everything is done um, virtually. But in some companies, um, like, like let's say after the corona situation, you know, you have to go and work somewhere. When you go there, um, you have to find a conference room when you set a meeting. Let's say if you're not doing virtual, not everybody likes to meet virtually. And then if maybe it's a one day conference or two days conference, or you really have to go and present something. So you have to go find a conference room, right? And if you work in a company. So there's a room finder options here. Okay, click on the room finder. Okay, right now it's not loaded. In the actual corporation, they will have room finders. If you click room finders, it'll show you exactly on this date, this time, what rooms are available, what conference rooms are available, what floors, then you can select, okay? Room finder options. Then location, if it's not, if it's virtual, you're gonna put your Zoom link here. They can, you can put Zoom or WebEx, then you can put your link here, calling number, bridge number, Zoom link, everything, okay? Now, another thing is in large, most of the companies, Zoom is, WebEx is integrated. Any virtual <coughs> meeting conference uh, uh, application, is usually integrated, so you'll find a button here. This is my personal use, I didn't do it. And then if I do it, if I do Zoom, it takes time you know, for the Microsoft Outlook to start because Zoom is an add-on, it's an extension to Outlook. It will slow my Outlook, so I'm not doing that. Um, so you can have an option here that it will automatically say, web, click on WebEx, it will show all the WebEx thing. Then here, you want to attach some documents for the people to take a look before they join the meeting, you can do so. Okay, so you can add some documents here, insert. If you have a PowerPoint, you have want to attach a file, you wanted to, you know, um, anything you can attach. That way it gives up, you have to send them a kind of, it prepares them, hey, what is this meeting is all about? Okay, that's very important. You have to set an agenda. You have to set some kind of expectation before you send a meeting to people. You cannot just like that send a meeting, you expect them to join. Okay, so they should know what is this for? Right, so you should, they should tell you, try to give as much as possible why I'm meeting this for, and what, what do you, why I need you people. Okay, make, make got it. These are core, these are skills. These are life saving skills. You will get that. Okay, initially it's going to take a little bit of you know, uh, I mean you are here why you are here. So you will get that. You will learn it slowly. I have to take this call. All right, so I'm back. So. Try to give as much as possible, as much information as possible so that they will, you know, come prepared and they know what to expect, what to expect. So that's about, um, you know, sending this, great. Next thing is you can also look at if, you don't know if somebody's free or not, right? Let's say required. I'm gonna put uh, this gentleman's name here. I'm not sure he's free when I choose the time. I cannot just set up a meeting, right? And expect him to be with, in the, go join the call without looking at his calendar, right? So you can go to scheduling assistant here. So it will show his calendar. It shows my calendar. It shows his calendar, this gentleman's calendar. And right now it's not integrated. His calendar is not integrated. In the corporation, everybody shares that calendar, right? Then it will show you whether he's free or not, okay? Right now, so no information could be retrieved because you know the in, in, in a company, they will share their calendars, they have to. <laughs> So, you, so that you will know whether somebody is busy or not. You want to include a manager. So you go and look at this guy here. It will show you in um, free means it shows black, white, blank. And um, if it's if it's not available, it shows in blue. Then if it's out of office, it shows in purple. Okay, that means he's out of office. That person is out of office. Do not schedule a meeting and don't expect him to join. Okay. Then you can do the make a recurring meetings as well. Um, I'll show you. So you can, once you do that, you can send it and then, <coughs> excuse me. So you can do the recurring meeting. Let's say you are setting up a weekly call. Okay, you can do this. What time you want to start? How long is this? Are you going to record? Is it like weekly and what day it is? And then when do you want to finish this meeting? Maybe six months from now, three months from now, or you want to do it after 10 occurrences, after 10 meetings, right? So all this you can do. 
Great. Um, I think that's pretty much it is. Now response options, another one. Here you can request responses or you can also allow people to propose a new time. Somebody may not be available that time. He may have an appointment, he may have another meeting. They can, you can allow them. They will say, you know what? Hey, um, Steve, I'm not available. They can propose. Is it okay this time? They can propose your time. So that's option you are giving it to them. Even if you get a meeting, okay? You have an option, okay? So for example, I'm gonna send this to, I'm gonna send this to myself. So I'm gonna send this to myself. And uh, this is well, today, that's, that's okay. I'm gonna send this. It says the meeting request has no location and it occurs in the past. Well, I'm just testing it. Uh, I can be more, you know, discipline and then I can put uh, future, future time. Okay, now it's gonna send it. Um, it says, do you wanna send this meeting without a location? Okay, don't send. So I'm gonna put a location, Zoom. Our backs, okay, and I'm gonna. I will put the link here, okay. So put the. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna send it to myself. Send. Would you like to update your own calendar now? Because I'm sending it myself. So yes, great. Now where is the calendar? So I can go look at here. I should be receiving a meeting invite. So I'm going to refresh here. Okay, I just clicked here to refresh. Okay. All right, it's not here yet. Let me see. I sent it to myself. So okay. So but however, it should come here saying that hey, you got a meeting invite. Maybe I sent it to myself, it's not there. Now you will get it. Um, I'll try to do it again. Okay, so it should be my calendar. Okay, today Thursday, see here. So I sent one at seven o'clock, seven to 7.30, 7 to 7.30, it shows twice uh, because I am the sender and the receiver, so it shows twice. Okay, otherwise you will just show it only once. So I open this. So from here, you can say, uh, go to scheduling assistant, it'll show you who are the attendees, okay? And then go back to the meeting again. And then you can say response options uh, because this is what I sent for myself. Um, if I open the next one, which is receiver, I believe. Correct, see this is what, this is a receiver. Okay, this, look at this, these tabs are different from center. This is a receiver. Here you can propose a new time. This is what I'm saying, right? You can decline it and propose any time, or you can say, you know what, I might be able to attend, but I prefer to have an, another time. You can do that. So you can respond yes or no, reply, right? You can you can you can reply. You know, you wanted to um, say something, you can reply, but generally you will accept it. Okay, right? You just send, send the response. Great. Usually that's that's the right bit thing to do. Some people do not send a response. If you do not send a response, they would not know whether you're going to join or not. Because the meeting, if you go to scheduling assistant here, the organizer would know, okay, who has accepted this meeting. So before the meeting, he knows who, how many people have accepted the meeting. So it's always the best advice to accept it. <coughs> Excuse me. You send the response now. You wanted to send them no doubt. Let's say edit the edit edit it edit the response before you send. You can say yes, I'll be there, or send me the agenda or something like that. Can you send me? Send me the meeting agenda. Okay. So that way you are you're prepared. Okay, you can send it to somebody. So I'm not sending it right now. Close this. So again, go back to this meeting invite again. So these are the fun stuff you could do. Okay. And then you know, reminder space known, you can set up a reminder in 15 minutes. Otherwise, it's automatic. And then it's going to show your calendar as busy. So the others would not set up a same another meeting at the same time. Okay, and you can forward to um, someone else. Let's say, hey, you want a help from other team member that's saying that, hey, I wanna uh, you a help in the meeting. Can you? Can you join too? So you can, you can forward this to that gentleman. So I just made some changes because here. So it's not save, save, then I'm gonna forward. 
So I can forward this to another person. Then he will get this meeting invite in his calendar. Then same story, he can respond directly to the organizer. The organizer will send a, a, get a notification that you forwarded your meeting to somebody else, another person. That way he's prepared, he's informed, right? Great. Um, that's pretty much it is. And uh, on the calendar, I wanna show you one more thing. So here, if you see, <clears throat> this is the calendar view. So it shows from Sunday to Saturday. You know, you can show pretty much, you, can, you, want to, you don't want to show this, you want to say Monday to Friday, you don't want to see on Sunday and Saturday, you can also change the layouts here, okay? Uh, and another thing was, you want to see, uh, because right now this is showing in PST. You may have people, a team working from CST, uh, sorry, PST time zone, or maybe from EST or you know, from Brazil or you know whatever time frame. You can have two um, two time zones calendar, okay? And uh, generally, um, it's better to have a calendar like showing like a, not by day, by time. Uh, oh no, it will be more easier. See, you can do work week. See, it was work week. Okay, so Monday to Thursday, you can change a month and you know schedule view. Um, it shows the time, you know, um, every day. And I generally prefer to work week. I'm sorry, um, week. Okay, the entire week. Now the times are shown here. Let's say uh, you want also wanted to make sure that when you set up a meeting or when you want to see, you want to put a different time zone because you know people you might be working as East Coast or some other some other places. Right, it's better you put another time zone here. So what I do generally is go to options. So again, I'm going back here, this is important. You can play around. So if you go to options, okay. There are a lot of things that you can change the feature. Okay, so general, you can play around. Okay, your signature and you know, um, a lot of information here. Okay, you can, you know, again, you want to compose the messages in HTML and you know, uh, you want to play a sound when the when you get email. You want to display a desktop alert. This is something annoying when you have you know thousands of emails coming to you every day. Let's go to calendar. So this is standard. So first you have a week. Um, you know uh, you want to show work week is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Great. Eight to five is what working hours. And then like I said, you can add holidays and then default calendar color. Here's the thing. <clears throat> See. Your time zone is central time. Let's say I want to add another second time zone. Maybe I have guys working in, let's say, um, where? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> let's say I have people in California. Okay, I can add this. I can. You can also put a third time zone if you want. I mean, that's kind of overkilling. Let's say you have people in, um, you know, Brazil. Okay, so you can do that, right? and then click okay see i have ever see this is more easier right so now i have a meeting at seven o'clock but this will be four o'clock in california nine o'clock in brazil so i didn't put the labels here that's why it's not showing again i'm going back here so these are essential skills it shows you how progress and how you know how you know you, you can showcase that you have experience so let's say you can access Okay. And then this label is California, Los Angeles, okay. LA. And then here label, I'm gonna put Brazil. Okay, see here, it's gonna show. So it's easier in, if you are setting, if you, have, if you have team working in multiple time zones, right? Great. Let's go back here, it will show you all the views. So this is now if I click on the calendar view, I clicked on the calendar view, I'm gonna go back to the mail view. So this is my inbox. All right, so we got signature, we got the setting up meeting, integration with Zoom, we saw this already. And how to accept it, how to look at, you know, who's accepting the meeting, who accepted the meeting, who is the organizer, and you know, who needs to be informed and things like this. Yeah, so the third is the same thing. See, you can see who accepted, who declined it, you know, who's a meeting organizer and who are all invited. So if you go to the scheduling assistant, if you go to let's open the meeting, go to scheduling assistant. Okay. If you send the meeting, if you are the organizer, you will see how many people have accepted and declined. Okay. 
All right. So if you are sending a meeting invite to five people, and let's say nobody accepted it, then it's uh, there's a concern. You should reach out to them and say, "Hey, I sent a meeting invite. Did you accept it? Am I going? Am I expecting you in this call? Right. Just to making sure. All right. Next one here is calendars in multiple time zones. Again, I covered it <coughs> even without looking at this. Now the mail views, calendar views, custom views. So let's take a look. So this is a stand. This is a standard views, right? So if I look at this, I like this type of views. I know who's who it came from, what is the message, the, the subject line, and when it came, right? The date, right? And then this is usually sort by date. That's 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 that makes sense, right? Because you want to know what is the latest email, which was which one was the latest email that you should respond, or you know how much emails are getting. This is a standard view. You want to change the views. Um, there's a place. Uh, let's see here. Um, folder view uh, views. You want to change the view? You can say you know you can group the messages. You can see like, this is another thing. If you do this, it will show you preview, right? I generally don't like this because uh, you have to open and see right each email, right? So I generally prefer to keep it simple. I'll keep it in yeah. Uh, which one I was having? Manage view, see. Okay, right, messages. Yeah, mm, yeah. I like to have this. You want to change? You can change. Go to view settings, right? You can, you know, uh, group by columns and you know all the stuff. You have to play around. <clears throat> What's comfortable for you? You know how much time you have to spend on this. Um, then this folder. So this is the reading pen, right? You want to change something here. You want to show in the bottom. See. The the part the already comes here. Again, I do not draw like I don't like this. See, you only see after the messages. I generally like the reading pen, which is where the your message displays. So I'll put it on the right side. So you know this is much easier for me, right? And I can immediately click on reply all, reply, and things like this. Now one more thing is try to reply all. Do not just reply. When somebody is sending an email, I have seen people just sending to me directly. When 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 I'm copying lots of people, there's a reason why I'm copying. I see sometimes people just reply to me. That's really bad. Try to when 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 you reply all, you're replying to people in the CC, not in the BCC. BCC nobody knows, right? It's hidden. <clears throat> so you reply all means two and BCC. You're replying to everybody. You can forward to somebody if you want. Okay, make sure. And then uh, even even uh, you know I forgot one thing in the composing a new email a reply. So let's say you want to compose a new email. Let's see, what's more important to you? At home, okay, I'm going to compose a new email. You put the address, like I said, you know, CC and then my subject, all this stuff. Very important thing is when you open up, always do a greetings, okay? Don't take it for granted. Okay, you're working for a company. Always, let's say, ST. Okay, always, good morning. Okay, or hope you had a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend, right? Or hope your, you know, everything, hope your day is going well. You know, hope uh, everything is going well. Hope you had a good break, right? Some kind of greetings, okay? Don't jump into the messages, okay? Always, um, if, if somebody is asking a question, hey, uh, something is not working. If Steve is asking me, hey, can you look at it? You know, I need your help. So what do you do? Again, good morning, whatever it is. Thanks for reaching out. Always, always open an email. Be grateful. Be show the gratitude. Okay. Thank you for. Don't take it for granted. When I see a message, somebody thank him, thanking me, I will. I'll be very happy. Okay. Whether you solve somebody's problem or not, that is different. Okay, uh, it's 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 with this cultural thing. But in US, it's very important when you open when you talk to somebody, always be appreciative. Okay, be grateful. Thank you for thanks for reaching out. Okay, and I'm glad to see a mail, something like that, right? Okay. Um, thank you for the follow up. You know. Let's say somebody asking you, hey, I sent an email yesterday. Uh, can you look at it? Okay, then thank you for the follow-up. And then say why, what you're doing. 
okay be clear don't take it for granted try to you know you're working for a company and you get paid but then more than that right just be grateful right um, you are paid for learning right that's the greatest opportunity this is the greatest thing about i think about you go and join a company you are paid for learning you are paid for your work i understand that but you are paid for learning just a great thing about you know working in it working in a company they are getting you are getting paid to build your career think about this <clears throat> okay don't take it for granted nothing is free so always open with their greetings thank you for reaching out if you are responding to an email thank you for reaching out glad to see your email and you know thank you for the follow up always say thank you okay and even when you are writing a new email um good morning or hope your day is going well i want to reach out to you to find out if something has been taking care i wanted to you know see if you're doing okay um uh, you know hope you're doing hope your days are doing well just add that you know the gratification moment okay great now when you send an email <clears throat> um let's say i'm sending an email to training info at right okay now like i said subject i'm going to put the subject uh what do we do this right uh in statement issue for the date okay 26 don't just give give a very precise information in the subject line that makes somebody account of that makes somebody open the email okay um, i got i got people i got seen people sending emails without a subject okay i hate opening those type of emails those people who are sending it they are highly irresponsible to send an email without a subject line or with a subject line there is no clue there is no correlation between their message okay you have to get used to it okay you will get there it's about practice now you can attach the file if you want to right and then you can also attach another email item see attach item you can also attach another item from your um from your outlook itself you want to send another hey you got an email i want to attach that email instead of forwarding you can forward to somebody but you want to attach that email you can attach by item okay yeah signature we talked about this it should come automatically now another important thing is follow up okay you can flag the message follow up follow up okay after this message is sent it will flag for you with the following information follow up so which means you don't you don't want to forget this email you want to follow up so when you follow up <clears throat> okay let's say i send this now number number the before i send it this is follow up right it will be flagged in your inbox so that you know that you have to follow up with somebody the next thing is <clears throat> excuse me high importance whether uh, is it very important for somebody receiving this email So if I'm, you want, it's very important. I'm sending an email to somebody which needs an immediate attention or response. I will put high importance, so that when people receive it, they know okay, there's something urgent. I have to respond to them, right? And you don't use it liberally, right? You you have to make the judgment. You have to use the assessment and judgment whether that's really important or not. Okay, that's important. Okay, great. <clears throat> um, so that's about uh, sending an email. and then um, you know there's something called you know switch to html and plain text somebody sent some graphics and then sometimes outlook doesn't help you can switch to html or plain text and then you know um, then the graphics will show up um, sometimes when you get an external email the pictures will not be shown um, you can you can set this download pictures automatically so that you see all the pictures um, okay see this uh, this is what i'm talking about i think zoom is already integrated I'm sorry, I made a mistake. This is just a zoom, not the zoom. Okay, um, um, my mistake. So this is just a zoom. You are, you know, text zoom. Okay, close this guy. Okay, okay. You can save the message. Generally, if you don't, if when you type the message, system will be system will automatically save this in your draft. Um, that way, you know, you don't lose your attention on this. You can come back and start, you know, drafting the message again. Uh, finalizing it before sending it so it that way you can take a, a, any amount of time to you know draft this email very slowly <clears throat> if it's a very important email you can draft and draft and draft until you finish it and send it okay do you want to we save the draft do you want to keep it no all right we saw that recall and send this is a very important uh, features too <clears throat> 
So let's say I sent an email to somebody. Okay, it's been sent items, right? I just sent an email to this gentleman. Okay, <coughs> I just sent it, but I found that this is wrong. You know, I either forgot to attach something or forgot to add some additional information. What I can do, I open that email from a sent items, sent items. I can recall this message. So when I recall this message, what happens? It has two options: delete unread copies of this message, delete unread copies, and replace with a new message. But usually, when people receive an email, they will immediately look at it, right? So once they have looked at it, you cannot recall. You can only recall if that person did not open the message, right? Open the email. You can delete unread copies of this message. Then, if is then it will be to recall. The person won't be able to open. If you did not see the message, then you recall it. You won't be able to open the message, email. If already opened it, you won't be able to recall. Okay, so there are two options. I mean, that's the, you have to give a try. I mean, you have to take a chance. Then you have to you can you can also recall success or not. It will send you oh yes, hey, the email is sent to Steve. Uh, if the recall successful. If it's not, it will say recall not successful because he already opened the he already opened the message. Now, now you can delete the unread copies or you want to send additional information, right? Replace with a new message. Some see as if nothing happened. I'm going to send an email with additional information. Will comes you. Let's say I want to add additional information. Correct. Just for just for you know testing, just for training. So you can send again. Okay. So there is a option to resend the message. Recall and resend. Let's say you want to resend, just resend. That you know you send a send an email. You're saying it's not receiving it. You can forward easily much better because it will show all the details here when you originally sent it, right? Instead of resend it, I prefer to forward it, okay? So that they know that you you already sent it on so and so date, okay? And that person said he did not receive it, okay? So we covered this recall, resend, and then we saw the follow up, and with flag, when you flag it, it will <clears throat> it when you flag it. Um, it is flagged for your reminder. Another important thing is, um, and I'm not, I'm not jumping here and there. Set priority, okay? So we saw that set priority. You know, when you send an email, okay, <coughs> you set the priority. Now you wanted to, uh, you're sending an email, a payment reminder for my vendor, or you want a file from your colleague, or you want a, a person to finish your file and send it to you, and he's working on it. So you want to follow up with them, right? And you want to set a time with them, you want to set the reminders, you can also do a reminder. Reminder for him, reminder for... Um, okay, this is another cool feature if you go to options, okay? Uh, before that, let me cover this. Um, let me see, where is this message? Follow up. Mm. Okay. No, no, not this one. Do the flag. Oh, signature link attached file. Where is that guy here? Mm. Let me see. Just bear with me. Yeah, so generally, if you click the follow up, um, that'll be a, if you flag a message. Yes, you know, I don't have the, maybe it's a, it's not a professional version that I use. Uh, maybe it's just a person who um, maybe doesn't have the privilege. So how does it look like? So when you click follow up here, right? It will open up like this. So you can flag for yourself, which means follow up. So you can say when you want to follow up with the, to with the uh, follow up on the action that person has to take. You can set a reminder. This is another option for recipients, like somebody, would not respond to your log. You are looking for a response. Maybe they forgot. Maybe they are too busy. So you can actually flag for recipients, which means this message will show up in his inbox on the particular time. A, send any an answer to the permit question. Send uh, this person because he's waiting for email. This is a cool feature, right? You don't have to feel shy. You can use this option if you're not, if you expect somebody to respond on so and so time. In a busy project, you know, somebody sitting on the email, it is not making sense. It is not productive, right? The follow-up option is very important, okay? 
now we are coming to all right rules <clears throat> very important thing so what is called rules so when you receive an email you can see lots of emails right in a company and you want to organize it how do you organize it for example this email i want this email automatically to go into a uh, see, always move messages from this this person. I want to create a new, <clears throat> excuse me, new inbox, new folder that can automatically go into this. You have to play around with it. It's very easy. So I have set up a lot of rules um, based on, let's say, if I find a particular sentence or word in the body of the message, and that email is coming from somebody, and the email is addressed to me, goes to this inbox, goes to the particular folder. Okay, and then if this is not sent it to me, if they send it to a group and that particular subject line, send it to the inbox. If it is coming from a Facebook, an email notification from Facebook, or you know, if from your shopping notification from Target, I want to send this to Target, I want to send this to <coughs> trash folder. So I can automatically say always move this message through trash if you are sending from spam. Right? So that's rule option. There's a lot of options in rule. It is very tricky to use it. Um, it's very cool. So it that way it keeps your inbox very, very clean. Okay. An archive inbox. So here, um, you work in a company, generally there's an archival tool. Uh, every email inbox will have a 2 GB space or 5 GB space, right? And your data takes a lot of storage. So whatever you see in the inbox, this is all sitting in server, the email server. Okay. If it becomes too many emails here, your email gets choked, which means you cannot receive, you cannot send. I have seen people struggling to send an email because it's sitting in outbox. It always shows an outbox. Let's say they're sending large volume of files, like two GBs, three GB files, even eight MB files. It will be an outbox because you have too many messages in the server that's taking up space. What you should do, <coughs> you should create a, see, I create a personal inbox. I archive all these messages. That way, it is it is it is not taking up your space. So you know you can ask your you know service desk or you know if they have archival tool installed. Generally, Outlook comes with the archival tool. It uh, it automatically archives certain items if it's like thirty days old or sixty days old and so forth. You will have you will have this. But I'm saying that your email gets choked if you do not archive this. Okay, that's very important. How do you archive this? You create another inbox. Um, let's say I go here, favorites. I guess I will just right click here. Or um, let's say I right click here. <clears throat> you know, I'll create a new folder. Similarly, okay. I create a new folder. Folder, let's say um, personal archive, right? So it will not be taken into your server account. Okay. See your mark. <coughs> so I'm going to do what? Push all these emails to the archive. So you can just select all this, right? You can select all the control A, select all this, and move to archive function. See? Or choose other folder. Or you can select drag and drop. See? I can take this. So drag into into draw C. It shows this computer only, which means it is not in the server. Now it is not in the server. So the server is free. See, it shows this computer only. Make sense? So if you log into your webmail, um, another laptop, um, you won't be, let's say you log into webmail, you will not see that messages because it is taken out of the server and moved to your archive folder. Okay. <coughs> I'm really sick today. See, that's how you do it, right? That way you keep your very clean. Yeah, so drag and drop, archive inbox, these are the rules. Um, follow up, flag, set priority, importances, you know, how to recall, how to resend, change the views, and how to set up, you know, calendars in multiple time zones. And then when you set up a meeting, you want to see who accepted, who declined, you know, who is organized and who are invited, and the integration with Zoom, and then how do you compose a new email, how do you respond to an email, 
and what are the protocols and you know what format to use and you know how do you address um, you know when to the to the receiver of the email and also various signatures that you use okay so that comes to end up your outlook training and i hope uh, sincerely you will uh, find it useful if you have any questions you know reach out to us and we also you know we are sap you know staffing training consulting company we'll be very glad to connect with you and uh, there could be more features uh, in outlook and um, you know don't tell you know I, i've seen people challenging me you know you didn't show me this great if you know this great that's fine this is for people uh, who needs help with outlook and who are you know, newbies and uh, um, not very familiar with this functionalities and they know they may be using it but they probably not sure about the features and they probably do not know how to send an email how to address people right they take it for granted again <clears throat> Again, I keep saying, when you send an email to somebody, thank you, always respond. Thank you for the follow-up. Always greet people. Don't take it for granted. All the best. Enjoy. And then hope you have a you know, great career. And then I look forward to see you guys very successful in your career. And this probably will help you a little bit. Thank you so much again. Talk to you. This is Jay Nathan from VRIT Tech. Yeah, so sorry. This is Jay from VRIT Tech, and uh, this training we we come to a completion of this training, my Outlook training. And uh, this is my name, and this is our email address that you want to reach out. Again, thanks for listening.